got a little bit of anodizing action going on today. As you can see, I got my battery acid bucket outside cooking with the power supply because the last time I tried to do this just with that back door open and the fan fans blowing it uh you know still getting it, some of the fumes I think we're still getting here because my throat just felt kind of funny and so I didn't want to ever do it that way again uh I need to just go get a respirator but even then I still think I want to keep doing it outside like that since uh the air pump line will reach the bucket out there but just uh, gonna give a little quick rundown on my process for this is that so I got I originally had built this workbench over here with the Oklahoma flag on it to try and keep all my anodizing stuff there thinking I would just do it on top of that workbench or down under maybe have part of it underneath it the flag part of it in there cooking but uh like I said, yeah, from the fumes and everything, I just kind of store everything there now. But I've got a, so I got the bucket outside that I use for, uh, with the battery acid and the power supply attached to it. And then if you come over here, the way I've been doing it is I typically will use brake cleaner to kind of blow any chips and shit off the part then I come back in here and I let it soak in the simple green for a few minutes. Then take a scotch bright pad and rough up the outside of it. Cause I don't, I don't do any etching in my process, but I just use a scotch bright pad to kind of give it the finish I want. And this is for a uh, 6061 aluminum, by the way. And then I will scrub it with the simple green after scratching up with a scotch bright pad for it soaked in that for a little bit i then dunk it in this jar of distilled water which is used just for rinsing simple green off then i will take uh this brush right there dunk it in the purple cleaner scrub it with that real good or the purple degreaser even though both of simple green and purple cleaner i do believe are degreasers but i've gotten results i've liked so far with this method so i'm still just using both of them but after scrubbing the part with the brush that's you know been dunked in the purple cleaner i then rinse the part off in this jar of distilled water which is just for cleaning purple cleaner off and then to make sure all that stuff's off, I then take the spray bottle up there of distilled water and spray it down real good to make sure there's no chemicals left on the part. That's when it goes into the acid cook. And for this part, which I'm doing, which is, this is one of them right there. That was actually a fail attempt when I was kind of trying to figure this out, which I, it partially anodized a little bit and not enough to take to color, but it's I'm doing that same part again and So I've got all the settings set for what I need for that I have to let it sit in the acid bath for about 45 minutes before I then come over here and I got the dye pot boiling which I then put it in there for 15 minutes after I get done with that rinse it off again with the spray bottle and then let it sit in just a boiling pot of distilled water to seal it up. And that's the oversimplified version of my anodizing process. There's a, I'm not gonna get into discussing the numbers of the math that goes into the amperage that, uh, that you need to set on your thing because that's information that's very available out there to find. But that's, yeah, that's pretty much how I'm doing it. And as you can see, here's the results for one of them or for a couple of them like I'm getting I'm getting good results from it and this whole setup right here cost me probably a few hundred dollars to get this all set up like this which you really can't complain about